Welcome to part 2 of the storage box feature in the multiplayer inventory system. Let's continue where we left off. Today we'll be working in the inventory component. We'll begin with the event begin play. Create some space between the event and the setup node. Connect the execution pin from the begin play event to a switch has authority node. Since the inventory component exists on both the server and the client, we use this to ensure that only the server executes the setup logic. The client will receive synchronized updates from the server. To achieve this, connect only the authority execution pin to the setup logic, leaving the remote pin unconnected. Add a comment here, labeling it as init the inventory. Now select the item slots variable and change its replication condition to initial or owner. This ensures that it is replicated only once during initialization and thereafter only to the owner of the actor. In our case, only the player's inventory is automatically replicated to the corresponding player. Create a custom event named Add Player for Replicate Server. Set its replicates property to Run on Server and make it reliable to ensure replication occurs. Add an input parameter named Character Ref with the data type B, P third person character object reference. Create a second custom event named Remove Player from Replicate Server. Also set to Run on Server and Reliable. With the same input character ref and data type B, P third person character object reference. Next, create a new variable called Replicate to Custom Players. I couldn't decide between naming it players or characters. In the end, I chose players. Set its data type to BP third person character object reference and make it an array. This variable will contain all characters who have registered for inventory replication, such as when they have opened the storage. Additionally, mark this variable as private. Now drag the replicate to custom players variable into the graph for both the add player event and the remove player event. For the add player event, add an add unique node and connect the pins accordingly. For the remove player event, add a remove node to the replicate to custom players variable. Again, connect the execution pins to the respective nodes. Now let's go into the character blueprint. Here, navigate to the inventory manager graph. We select the event on inventory slot drop server, set the replicates property to run on server, and also mark it as reliable. We had forgotten to do this last time. We create a custom event named init inventory replication client. Change the replicates property to run owning client and again mark it as reliable. Create an input named inventory ref. For the data type, choose our BPC inventory component. Create another input named item slots. For the data type, select the S inventory slot structure and make the input an array. We take the inventory ref pin of the event and search for set item slots. Connect these two pins accordingly. This ensures that when a player registers for inventory replication by accessing the storage, they receive the current state of the inventory. Now back to the inventory component, we call the event via the character ref pin of the add player for replication events. For the item slots pin, we drag our item slots variable onto it. For inventory ref, we connect the self reference. Select the two events and comment on them. Register, unregister players for custom replication like accessing a storage box. Compile and save it. Now let's return to the storage box blueprint. In the stop interact event, call the remove player from replicate server event on the storage inventory component. 
connect the execution pin and the character ref input accordingly. This ensures that when a player stops interacting with the storage box, they are properly deregistered from receiving inventory updates. In the character access storage server event, call the add player for replicate server event on the storage inventory variable. Connect the pins just as we did earlier. This registers the player to receive inventory updates when they start interacting with the storage box. Organize everything neatly and add a few reroute nodes for better clarity. This helps keep the blueprint tidy and makes the logic easier to follow. Compile and save everything and then return to our inventory component. Next, we need to revise the notification for slot changes. To do this, create a new function named notify slot changed. This function will handle updates whenever items in the inventory slots change, ensuring that all registered players receive the latest information. By implementing these steps, we're enhancing the efficiency of our multiplayer inventory system, ensuring that only relevant players receive updates, which optimizes network performance in our game. Now grab the event dispatcher on slot changed and drag it into the graph as a call. Connect the execution pins and drag the slot pin from the call onto the notify slot changed function to automatically create an input pin for it. Next, we need a new custom event which we will create in the graph. Name it notify slot changed client. Set its replication to run owning client and make it reliable. Also, set this event to private. Then, drag the event dispatcher on slot changed again as a call into the graph and connect the pins. While doing this, create the input slot in the event. By invoking the event dispatcher on slot changed, we notify all registered listeners of the change, and by chaining the calls we ensure that both the server and the client are updated accordingly. Go back to the notify slot changed function and mark it as private before we forget. Now, after the call on slot changed, call the newly created event notify slot changed client. For the slot pin, connect it with get slot, which is the variable of the function. Next, we ensure that all clients who have registered for replication receive their data. Get the replicate to custom players variable as a get into the graph. Call the is note empty node on it and connect this to a branch node. Bind the branch to the execution pin. Duplicate the replicate to custom players variable and call the for each loop node on it. Grab the array element of the for each loop and call the is valid node on it. We need to check whether the character blueprint that should receive the update is still valid or not. Get the replicate to custom players variable again as a get and call the remove node on it. If the character blueprint is not valid, then we remove it from the replicate to custom players array. Connect the array element to the remove node. Now we need a corresponding event in the character blueprint for dispatching the slot changes. Go into the character blueprint and create a new event. Name it root replicate inventory slot client. Set replicates to run owning client and make it reliable. Create an input named inventory ref. For the data type, choose the BPC inventory component. Create another input named slot. For the data type, select the S inventory slot structure. Change both inputs from arrays to single values. Now, go back to the inventory component and its event graph. Here, we need to create the event to which we will redirect. Create a custom event named replicate slot client. Set replicate to run owning client and make it reliable. Create an input named slot with the data type S inventory slot structure. Grab the slot pin of the event and perform a break. 
Hide all pins except for the slot index pin. Drag the variable item slots as a get into the graph and call the node set array lm. Connect the execution pin. Connect the slot index to the index pin of set array lm and the slot pin to the item pin. Mark these two events and comment them with notifies to the client for slot updates. Go back to the character blueprint and in our root event, where you grab the inventory ref pin, call the event replicate slot client that we just created. Connect the two slot pins. Give the event init inventory the comment, update slot items when opening a storage box or something similar. Now, add a comment to the route event. Reroute the slot update for custom inventory replications. Compile and save everything then return to the inventory component. In the notify slot changed function, we can now grab the array element from the for each loop and search for root replicate inventory slot client to call it. For the inventory ref, set the self reference. For the slot, use get slot, which is the slot variable of the function. Organize everything again, take a deep breath, and move on to the last step. Replacing the previous event dispatcher calls with the notify function, we right-click on the onslaught changed event dispatcher and select find references. Below, we see a find result showing everywhere the event is used. Clicking on an entry takes us directly to where it is used. We have it once in the event graph, which is fine. Then, in the set item function, we need to replace this with the notify slot changed function. We bring it in, delete the old call, and connect the pins. The next location is in set quantity at slot. We do the same here. Bring in our notify function, delete the old call, and connect the pins. Lastly, we have it in the notify function itself, which can stay. Okay, in the end, we have one more thing to do. For this, we go to our BP MyPlayer controller. In the event begin play event, grab the execution pin and add a branch. For the branch condition, search for the node eyes local player controller. If true, the widget should be created. If false, nothing should be done, since we only want to generate the widget for the player and not the server. Lastly, pass the self-reference as the owning player to the create widget. Now, click on the three dots at the top and select net mode, then choose play as client. This simulates running the server while we play as a client. We give ourselves a few items. And yes, moving items back and forth still works. However, be aware there's a bug where you can only move items from the hotbar into the first 10 slots of the inventory. The other slots are ignored. We'll address this issue in upcoming episodes. The problem lies within the widgets themselves, specifically with the slot data variable, if I remember correctly. Maybe you can figure it out on your own and help me fix the error. That's it for this episode. In the next one, we'll build the widget for the storage box and the interact function so that we can finally move items back and forth and everything is replicated for all players. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like or subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes of this tutorial. Thanks for watching and have fun.